Emmanuel Macron. Emmanuel Macron ci a définis vomitevoli, chinichi, irresponsabili. E qui la stampa italiana a dire, hai eh, visto che ha detto Macron, che siamo irresponsabili, vergogna. Irresponsabili Emmanuel Macron sono quelli che hanno bombardato la Libia perché gli dava fastidio che l'Italia avesse un rapporto privilegiato in campo energetico con Gheddafi, esponendoci al caos migrazione nel quale ci troviamo. Cinici Emmanuel Macron... Sono i francesi che mandano la gendarmerie a rispedire indietro qualunque immigrato tenti di passare il confine a Ventimiglia. Ma soprattutto, perché le cose vanno raccontate come si deve, vomitevole è chi... Bono, che lo vuoi che tu? Ci cioè, hai tolto il pato. Vomit vomitevole è chi come la Francia continua a sfruttare l'Africa stampando moneta per 14 nazioni africane sulle quali applica il signoraggio facendo lavorare bambini nelle miniere estraendo materie prime come accade in Niger dove la Francia estrae il 30% dell'uranio che gli serve a far camminare le centrali nucleari e il 90% dei nigerini vive senza elettricità non ci venire a fare lezioni Macron perché l'Africa scappa da voi e la soluzione non è spostare gli africani in Europa è liberare l'Africa da certi europei non accettiamo lezioni Chiaro? Wow. Just wow. Hey squad, welcome to the Bantu Sun. I'm Brandon. And that right there, who was just talking, the new Italian Prime Minister, Georgia Maloney. And She was just pretty much stating what most people that have even the slightest idea of how the world works um, from a geopolitical, geopolitical point of view already knows is that the world operates on influence, finance, power, for lack of better phrasing. In this case, she stated that Gaddafi Uh, may have made some overtures or some some deals with Italy, which France felt slighted by. I don't, I mean, whether you take that point of view, uh, whether you take it was an African, anti-African coalition or perspective, Wikipedia has a point of view, whatever you, not Wikipedia, excuse me, WikiLeaks have its point of view, uh, whatever way you want to take, one thing we do know for a fact is, France has got to be one of the worst colonial powers. Now, it's not an argument about, an argument about whether a country should be colonized or not colonized, but it's the question of, did you leave the cupboard bare? You look at a lot of British colonies, right? At least the United Kingdom left it with some form of, of law. And a lot of these former colonies of the British Empire do, do relatively well for themselves. United States, Canada, Australia, even the ones in Africa, Kenya, Nigeria, Ghana, South Africa, these are usually the economic standouts in, in their regions. Can you name a successful French colony? I, I'm, I was thinking, I don't know, Quebec? I don't, I don't know, I don't know. So if you know, please let me know. And the French have always been bad with this, this international affairs stuff. They just, just some people get it, some people don't. Uh, because they're, they're, they're a hammer. You know, it's one of those sayings, when you're a hammer, everything's a nail. You know, they, they, I think about historically, like Napoleon trying to attack the British in Egypt and take over Egypt and their ships being sunk and him being stranded in Egypt. I think the catastrophe, the catastrophe of Haiti, I think about that horrendous deal they did with selling the Louisiana Purchase to the United States of America. 
Like the French has never really been good at this. And then on top of this, they go into Africa with this 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 fiat currency scheme on getting all these countries on uh the French franc. So I just find or or African franc as they were call it. I I just find it you know uh what they say a uh, a zebra doesn't change its stripes. French could have been anything in the world they wanted to be at one point in history. And they, and they ch- chose a path of, of, of sabotage and catastrophe. So many African countries, they could have impacted in the most positive way, leaving behind rule of law, introducing some type of, of, of commercial exchange for mutual benefit. So just like Britain, when America went its own way, who has been the greatest ally of Britain since the Revolutionary War? Like, how many times have America been there for Britain? The French can never say they, they put another country in place to be a, a, a friend to them. Like the best relationship I can think them having is France, who, who that relationship is, is Germany, excuse me. And that relationship built on um, their trepidations or their wariness of the Germans coming back after World War II in a stronger, more vindictive state. Or the, the Soviets steamrolling, steamrolling across Europe to get to them. So they built up alliances uh, within Western Europe, some of, of which NATO being one of them. Um, so I think a couple things coming on. One, it shows how feckless France has been at this. Two, it shows that I think Europe's in a real tough place right now. This is going to be the new mindset of the person that's going to be heading up Italy. And I, I do think that there's going to have to be a rapprochement between France, Germany, and Italy. I'm not saying it's going to be a, a, another version of the Holy Roman Empire, but I, I really think it's going to have to be some type of meeting of heads here because they're in a real tough place. I think that with with the, the Nord Stream being blown up and the Norwegian pipeline through Denmark to Poland coming through, which is going to bypass Germany, sort of. This is establishing now from Norway to Poland. This is the quarter. This is an Atlantis mindset. When in the old days, you used to talk about uh, maritime powers versus continental powers. This is a maritime strategy. What they're doing is that we're extending the Atlantic realm and we're going farther east into the land. So what they're doing is they're segmenting Europe at Poland, bringing the, everything west of Poland within that behind the line of energy. So this is a, a, an American, British, I think, advantage strategy bypassing Germany and going straight to Poland. Before Nord Stream was a Russian to Germany, that's more of a continental strategy, right? Because you're, you're keeping that access away from the ocean powers. So it, and it's closer to Eastern Europe in the heart of the continent. So I think this new strategy is it's only a matter of time before France and Germany and Italy say, what are we doing here? Uh, and, and it's a lot of synergies there. And maybe they can go back into Africa with a better plan and more to offer the African people. Because right now, Africa's about to be a kid in the candy store. Between their favorable demographics, they're a massive resource base. Competition is heating up over there. Now, who knows how it's going to land with who, et cetera. But the opportunity is abundant uh, for to build a relationship with. And Africa is going to really have a pick. Russia is trying to break their way in there. But it's a far stretch because of just diff- distance geography. Russia's him then pretty much from a geostrategical point of view with Greece and Turkey blocking the Black Sea from the Mediterranean. To me, that's always going to be a major issue. So... As you can see, Russia is trying to make things happen in Ukraine, but I don't see how Russia can really be influential in Algeria or or uh, Central African Republic if they can't even get outside of the the Black Sea region. To me, but Russia is trying to compete there. You've seen they've tried to step into some of the French void because once again, French have eroded their trust so much on the continent. The Turks are making plays there. Look at some of the countries Erdogan um, been to. One of the things we do over here from a research point of view is we like to see which countries do head of states travel to. Erdogan has made plenty of trips to Africa. Um, 
I think testing the market, building up security or, or testing the water for future security arrangements. But you got to remember, this is historically their regions, the Turks. They, they probably believe that due to their Ottoman legacy. Got the Chinese, which is always a big one. And, and you know, the Middle East players, your, your Saudi Arabia, UAE, Qatar, they're going to always be interested in that, that Middle East, North Africa region. And they, they got big sovereign wealth funds to make things move in a fairly quickly manner, as well as the Arab League, which they can work through. And they're building cultural connections and business partnerships. So Africa is going to be highly contested. And, and for the French to basically have this reputation at all, I, I think that's the biggest thing. What what was there? What happened? I, I don't know. We, we do know that French were the, the biggest supporters of regime's change in Libya. And then the unfortunate part is that you use Africans to do it, right? Those weren't, Af those weren't Frenchmen dragging Gaddafi through the street. Those were Africans. So I think it says one thing, a couple of things. One, Africa is going to have this pick, but Africa needs to know what Africa wants. Because that was, well, at the end of the day, it was Africans that overthrew Gaddafi. But it also says that the European legacy, especially the French legacy, is in under extreme threat in Africa, regardless of how long they've been there. I just think the competition is going to get extremely intense in that part of the world. And it goes to the fact that it's a new day in Italy. So we want to see what is this new leadership is, is taking the country. We try not to get too political here because we think it's still marginal. I still think Italy has a bunch of problems. I, I think it's an extremely limited country. And I also think that the current structure of Italy is just an outgrowth of, of European industry. So it's kind of that synergy where you have France, Germany, and Italy, or what we would say in the old days was that, that Holy Roman Empire, that, that Rhine, Rhine River, uh, periphery. So these are all things to be watched. Let me know if you think I'm, I'm off base on this one, or you think I got the right idea. And tell me what you think of possible solutions that maybe France should have with their former African colonies to build better relationships or whether that opportunity is just gone. So thanks for your time. Uh, please like, subscribe and share if you enjoy the content. Take care. Till next time. Then to up.